sweet girl. Hey, you made it. Good job. Well, this is my new goat, Mo. She's kind of a goat I bought on the sly. If you notice, Mo looks like Pippa. Same coloring. Um, she's out of Pippa's twin sister, so she's a granddaughter of Eclipse. Now she normally has trouble getting up on the milk stand, so I was going to show you that and talk about it this morning. And then she jumped up just fine for the first time since I've had her. But she's a sweet little thing. Kind of thin, but she's a yearling and just kidded like four weeks ago, and she just moved here, so she's not eating very well right now. She's living over with the kids right now, because alpines, if you have alpines, you know how aggressive they are. They're so mean. If I threw her in with these big goats, she would be pummeled and possibly injured. So I put her in with the kids and I was going to, I had her in a pen by herself and was going to bring in a couple other the milking does over there after she'd been there for a couple of days, you know, one or two at a time. Because it works better if you introduce them to one or two and they hash it out. And then after a couple weeks, you put those three back in the main herd. Then the main herd is picking on all three because the two have been gone for a while and they think they're strangers. And so they're not just picking on this single one. And she has already had her fight with those two. So then she kind of has some buddies to hang out with, whatever, that aren't fighting with her. So that's why I do it that way. Um, but she has shown some problems. So I've just been keeping her with the kids, and she'll probably never go with the adults, and I probably won't keep her. So then my vlogs are like all these stories I was just talking about, but they're all over other days and because I can't get it all done in one day. So I always thought that this, I always thought that way if I was a writer too, that it'd be easier to do fictitious stories than real ones to make it flow better. Like this, instead of just telling you it's the next day, even they can see by what I'm wearing and whatever. I guess keep it accurate, I should tell you it's the next day. Also one of the reasons why I don't vlog is it's always windy here. I'm sure you can hear that wind in the background roaring through the barn. It's probably 30 plus miles an hour right now and that's normal. But I'll try to get some other clips of her moving around too. It's mainly just jumping up on the stand. Um, but she does it other ways too whenever she wants to shift her weight to rear end. So what's really concerning about this is well, I should milk her first. I'll be back. This one can have some more time to eat some grain. So the reason this is really concerning is I'm afraid it's a genetic problem. So, I had a goat named Fleeka. And she was my favorite goat. And she died when she was two. And so, for a long time I wanted to get kind of the same bloodlines another doe, see if I could kind of get this n another Fleeka, you know, which doesn't work. And I'll just be happy with the memories of the one you had. So the closest I could find at that time was a kid that was coming out of, well, it was just out of a sort of unrelated doe, but the dad was a half brother to Fleeka. And so I wanted that kid. So I contacted Lady and got on the list. And this is not Fleeka's breeder. Um, she sold that buck kid, and it's a different lady. So I contacted her and told her I wanted on the list, and she said, okay, and got me on the list. And then a few months later, maybe November, December, I really don't remember, I'm just thinking breeding season to when the kids would be due. Um, anyway, before the kids were born, she messaged me and she said, 
that that buck had been having some, well he had him since he was a kid, but he was getting worse and his hind end was weak and wobbly and he couldn't walk right and whatever. And his sister, who is a breeder had kept, was the same. And she said, and so mind you that, so the original breeder is a vet and has been breeding goats for 40, 50 years. Um, so she said they were talking and they don't think it's genetic. Both kids were born with it, but they don't think it'll be passed on. And what else they noticed about those two kids is the hair whirl on the top of their head was positioned behind their ears. So the goats have a hair whirl right there, right, be right behind their horns, or where their horns would be. And in this case, they were saying it was back behind their ears. So that was just something they noticed, so they were just going to check the kids for that after they were born and figure they were good if they didn't have that. There was one doe kid in question out of the group that year, um, not Eclipse's sister, but, well, half-sister, I guess, same sire, and, but she didn't have the hair whirl, and they thought it was because of the way she was just built. She was really small and frail, and had a really wide back end, and they just thought, you know, she can't really hold herself up, and maybe that was the case, I don't know. But that was two or three years ago, or three or four, I don't know how many years ago. Eclipse is probably five. So it was a long time ago. Anyway, so Mo is out of one of Eclipse's daughters. So they go, so Mo goes back to that um, buck that had that problem, and he ended up being butchered because of it. I don't know what happened to his sister. Okay, I've drawn a little diagram here to help figure it out, and I'm going to turn and face the board because I can't tell where I'm pointing if I'm looking at the camera. So, obviously that's Mo, and these are their real names, so. So the problem started right here. He was the one that had the bad legs and ended up getting butchered because of it. And his sister, twin sister out of those. So, what my concern is, if this is a genetic problem, and say it transmits like a lot of genetic problems, both parents have to be carriers, so that would mean that Jing is a carrier and Nuff is a carrier, is how they produced these bad kids. So the concern in this pedigree is, with her acting like this, is if, if this is a genetic problem, and these two go to carriers, well, we also have a carrier up here. And carriers can pass on carriers through generations with no effects until they run into another carrier. So, if that's the case, that means, so he was affected, so that means Eclipse is a carrier, Wisp is a carrier. I need to fix my check marks. That didn't help much. And also that Felix is a carrier. So that would mean it came down all these lines until it finally found another carrier in these two goats. And I'm really concerned that's what happened here. Um, there's no way to prove it because there's no genetic testing in goats like there is in dogs. Actually, there's one. It's in Nubians. It's a certain thing that's only in Nubians. Which is really frustrating, because this reminds me of a one, even... It even reminds me of one that Border Collies have. If there was just more research into goats like there is in dogs, because everyone has dogs and everyone has pets. Not everyone has goats, and no one cares about goats. But I wish there was some testing. I could just test her. And we could know. But we can't. So, I'll have to wait and see what the vet says. Um, I think she would have to have a pretty compelling argument to convince me that this wasn't genetic. Um, and if it, if I do decide it is, basically, I'll just decide because there's not really much else you can do. Um, 
I'm going to always have to be careful never to mix these lines. And also, I have a buck in the tank who's a son of him, who apparently I can't use because I'm mixing these lines again. And the other real concerning thing for Moe's breeder, who I bought her from, is she has Felix, and she uses him all the time. And she also has a doe out of Nuff, or by Nuff. And she kept a buck kid from him. And I think she plans on basing like her whole herd around Felix and that doe through her buck kid. So that means she's going to be mixing more Felix and Nuff lines. We don't know if that doe would be a carrier or her kid would be a carrier. We have no idea. But that's something that also could be very concerning for her. So, well, I guess we'll just wait and see. Wait and see if she gets better. Wait and see what the, the vet says. And go from there. Um, yeah. Like I said, it looks, that's what it looks like to me, so... Uh, I don't know. Unfortunate situation, that's for sure. So, my plan right now is to send a video of what this doe is doing to that original breeder, the vet, and ask her what her thoughts are. Um, her hair whirl is not behind her ears, that's normal. But obviously, correlation does not mean causation. So we don't know why those other ones had that. But certainly she appears to have the hind end problem. Um, I'm just waiting for a couple weeks simply because that breeder is at uh, the national show right now, so I don't really want to bother her until she, wait until she gets home, you know? So I'm not going to post this video until after I talk to her and see what she thinks because I don't want to be spreading stuff around in the goat community if that's not what it is. Um, if it is what it is, I'm still not going to go spreading it around, but I will post this video and if there's any goat people that watch this, they're going to know who it is and the pedigrees and all that, but I don't feel it's right to keep something like this a secret. Um, I also don't feel like it's necessary to go blab it all around either. So I'll just leave it in here and what comes of it comes of it. As I'm sure you can understand, that's very disappointing and very worrisome. Put that in there, girl, and milk in a minute. Well, now they're both getting antsy, so I'll milk them and. So, well, I don't know where we're at in this video, and I won't know until I start editing it, so if this is getting long already, well, I'll just stop the vlog right here and catch up with you in the next one.